Welcome to Youth Football Scotland TV again. I'm your host today, John Woods, and I'm here with footballer Liam Henderson on loan at Empoli from Hellas previously played for Rosenberg, Celtic and Hibernian. How are you today? I'm good. I'm very good, mate. How are you? I'm brilliant, thanks. I'd love to just crack on straight into it. So what is your first memory of football and what actually got you into football? <clears throat> My first memory of football, I can remember this very vague, was probably receiving a pair of football boots. I think I was about three three years old and uh, it was a birthday present and I remember receiving them uh, on my third birthday I was like over the moon that's probably my first memory of something to do with football and uh, not obviously got any football because my dad played so he was obviously a big a big influence on me and then obviously I've got two little brothers as well so kind of all grown up that's all we kind of did was was just play football with each other to, to be fair. So, um, uh, your time at uh, boys club before you played academy football, how was that? Where, where did you play? I played for Broxbourne Colts, just local team. Local team was class, though. We had a really good team, uh, like boys that I went to school with and stuff. We all played in the same team, so it was good, like training twice a week, I think, and then playing on a playing on a Saturday. It was good when you were young. You just wanted to go out and play and kick a ball with your mates, so it couldn't have been, been any, any better than... Uh, what a good uh, upbringing at Broxburg brought through a few it was really good really good yeah um, so from Broxburg you then obviously played for Hearts um, was it the kind of Donald going into academy football for the first time it was a little bit aye it was a little bit because like like you said Donald is probably a good one that you go to school with and that you're leaving like Leaving what you know, and then you're going into like kind of all I had to pick from, and just going basically on. I think the connection's kind of going here. Not be there's Wi Fi. Where I thought that would be my Wi Fi because here in Italy, the Wi Fi is not the best. Hey, could you just try and just tell us again how it was when you went to Hearts, please? Yeah, like you said, daunting in the beginning because obviously you're leaving all your pals that you go to school with and stuff and even go and play for kind of like professional. No, there were three teams. There were three teams that I, I kind of had to pick from. It was Hearts, Hibs and Falkirk. But Falkirk trained at Stirling Uni and Hibs trained at Dalkeith Academy. So it was like a nightmare for me to get from Broxburn to Stirling Uni, like my mum and dad to take me. And then it was a nightmare to get to Dalkeith because you had to go through the bypass. So I ended up going for Hearts because it was literally just at record and it was 15 minutes from, from, uh, from Broxburn. And obviously, of course, Hearts is a, has a good academy at that time as well. was a lot of the... A lot of the young players were coming through the academy and actually played for the first team. So, no, it was a uh, really good time. I enjoyed Hearts. It was a top setter. And then, it's well known that you then went to Celtic. Can you remember how you felt when you thought there was an opportunity to go to Celtic? No, it was great. It was obviously great again. But then, at that age as well, I had to choose from I had to choose from Rangers or Celtic to go to. And uh, <clears throat> no, I think it was. I think. I think it was my man that kind of a coach called Martin Miller that kind of convinced convinced me to go to Celtic at the time, and I think Celtic as well back then were known for playing a little bit more football than than Rangers as well, and I just think that kind of swayed the decision. Obviously, it was it was flattering that two of the biggest clubs in Scotland were were interested in me at the time, but then uh, I chose Celtic, and I kind of kind of never really looked back. So in your academy years at Celtic, is there anything that stands out as being a highlight or a memory from before you were like a first team player there? Um, <clears throat> probably going on like the international tournaments. That was kind of like another aspect of why I chose to go to Celtic because like you're from the age of like twelve to the age of sixteen, you're going like abroad to play against like all the best players at your age. Do you know what I mean? So that was a big. Um, a big, a big thing for me as well, and some good experiences playing against like Ajax, AC Milan, uh, Anderlecht, uh, Basel tournament in Belgium, probably the best one, I, 
when I went to when I was at Celtic. But no, <clears throat> I enjoyed the whole the whole academy experience. I had a top coach. Well, my favourite coach in the academy was Mio Drag. Um, your dad might have played with Mio. I don't know. Yeah. Well. But he was my favourite coach. He taught me so much. He was probably the coach that taught me so much in the, the, the time I was in the academy. Yeah, so then in your time at Celtic Academy, you broke through to the first team. Can you remember your debut very well? I remember it was away to Motherwell. It was away to Motherwell. And we'd we done like a wee training session the morning of the game, like little boxes and stuff. And I actually done, I'd done really well. Even though it was like it was only like half an hour or something, but I was like I was looking sharp and that. I remember Parks come up and saying, "You've got a, like a wee chancey coming on tonight if like things are going well." So I kind of went back in my mind and then obviously you're out warming up and then the gaffer gives you the the shout to come back in and get yourself ready to go on. And <clears throat> no, it was like a combination, like a period of all that hard work had finally kind of came came to the forefront and I managed to come on and like as soon as I made my, my debut it was away from I played for Celtic even though it was only eight minutes or something I'm not sure and then at quite a young age 19 you went you went on loan to Rosenberg for a couple of months and you ended up doing the double for enough games to get the winners medal in the league and the cup there how was Rosenberg and obviously moving away to Norway at such a young age? It was, it was good. I remember being away with Scotland under 19s at the Euros fine lines, and I remember getting a phone call saying Rosenberg were interested. Uh, dad and that straight away and thought it was like a great opportunity. Months here yeah, going and experiencing something new and out like my comfort zone. I think population, I think a lot more more need to leave the country to develop new football. I think that would help for the national team as well. But no, it was good. Like I went for three months, great experience. Rosenberg was like a, a top club, biggest place, so not. And yeah, so Rosenberg, I was getting, my next question was going to be if you think more Youth players should go out to Norway to play. play but I answered that by saying, "You think that'd be a good idea for getting games under the belt in a broad country?" I think. I think it would be a great. The similar size of population in Scotland. Uh, okay, you've got the Celtic and Rangers, Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen. They're big clubs, but at the end of the day, you want to kind of go and learn a, a new style of football. Well, like I, I would recommend it to anybody. I think it would be Scottish, going to Belgium, Norway, uh, wherever. I think it would benefit the country as a whole if uh, young boys went out and learned like a different style of football. Right, going, going back to Celtic again, your, your first competitive for Celtic uh, came against Partick Thistle in the 5-1 win, which also clinched the league title. Was that, was that a fond memory? No, amazing. Like an amazing memory. I came on at half time and it was like, obviously it was two, I think it was one nil. The time. So, uh, no, I came, my dad were in the crowd as well. So when I've scored and I celebrate right in front of them as well. So that special for me and them. They, they, followed, they followed me everywhere up and in the country. Even if I was in the stand, be up, falling me everywhere. So no, no, it was proper special. Then obviously you signed a, a three-year deal at Celtic, but along the fact that you went on to Hibs, is there a fake that you as a Hibs player? Say that again, sorry. Um, I just said so. You signed a three-year deal at Celtic. And then when I went to Hibs and just to ask you if you have a favourite memory there. There's a lot of memories at Hibs. Like the dressing room is quality. Like it's all there's all young boys, young boys there, all like hungry to play. <clears throat> the manager was top class, the coaching staff, uh, 
favourite memory, I've probably got two, probably the game at Tynecastle when we came back to draw two, two and take it to a replay in the Scottish Cup. And then, then obviously the Scottish Cup. Finals, best memory. The day I'm and just lost the connection about there again. Uh, the Wi Fi, I think my, it's my Wi Fi because I'm in a hotel here in Venice and it's yeah, it's not the best Wi Fi. No, no I'm not Wi Fi. Would you mind just saying the bit about the Scottish Cup final again there, please? No, I'm saying the, the day the Scottish Cup final was madness. Like, obviously, the way we won it as well in the last minute. And then the Sunday with the top bus. And it's after it as well. It was just constant time. I had a wee suspicion that the Scottish Cup final was going to be one of them. So, obviously, since your career took what could probably be called a massive turn by moving out directly to Barry, where you went on trial and then obviously signed, was it hard to adapt your game to the Italian game? No, it was kind of like, I kind of like hit the ground running here, to be honest. I think, I don't know that maybe just my style of play, it's a little bit more technical in Italy and I don't know, maybe it's it just, it just me obviously I had a top class uh, coach in Fabel who kind of made it easier for me to settle in as well, to, he had clear ideas of how I wanted, to, how I wanted me to play, where I, where I wanted me to play in. We built quite a good young team and we had quite a couple young foreigners as well, so I became instantly in English too, so it was good in that aspect that I had some other at first time like my like myself. Yeah, was it hard to adapt to life in Italy as well? Because I mean, just from Scotland, the difficult, which was obviously number one, was the most difficult thing to get my around. But now, like. I've been here two and a half years and I'm really, really confident. Uh, that's something I'm proud of, to be honest, one of the more language, <coughs> having been, been here for two years now. So, it, no, obviously the language was the most difficult thing. And then obviously you learn about the culture and it goes on, but definitely the language is the most difficult, the most, uh, was the most Then um, Barry obviously unfortunately had some financial issues and it, it came out that you moved to Verona. So yeah. how was your time at Verona? Obviously you're still a yes. Verona player, but before you went on loan. No, it was great. Obviously Fabio Rosso went to Verona from Barry and then basically just took me took me with him with him as well because it was a like and having the same manager for six months and then him leaving I wanted to continue to play on the way he played and uh, and how he was bringing me on as a player so it was kind of a no-brainer to follow him to, to Verona and Verona's a pretty big club, club in Italy as well it's, got a it's a beautiful city to live in I stayed in Lake Garden just outside Verona so it was like being on holiday to Lake go out in the boat swimming pool at the like the apartment and stuff I had. So it was like being on holiday when the football was finished. So that's um no Verona is great. And they're doing they're on fire just now in in, in Serie A. So they're doing they're doing amazing with the new coach. Yeah. Yeah Ivan Juric he's top top class as well. Obviously you were you were the the first player to play in the Serie A from Scotland in, in thirty eight years. That must feel like a really big privilege for you. No it's a
amazing. It was like a like a funny thing a lot and uh, uh, Joe Jordan, and then it's me. Players, but it's obviously a nice a nice thing to have. Yeah. So obviously now you're on you're on loan at Empoli. How's your time at Empoli been so far? I think I've lost you again. Just let me know when you're back. Is that it? Yeah, yeah that's it, I think. No, like I say, Empoli reminds me a lot of Hibs. It's a very like family oriented club. Uh, it's good, really good. Everything's well organised. Training centre's top. We've got a good young team here as well. And we just, uh, just obviously, at this precise moment, we've got seven games left. So we're just trying to get as many points as possible to try and get uh, get ourselves into the playoffs again. And hopefully, we can go for another promotion promotion push. Yeah. So just just to finish it all off, you've you obviously you've played abroad in, in two different countries, which is a big achievement just for a Scot a Scottish midfielder. So would you say what were what are some pros and cons of playing football abroad? Some pros is I think if you go to another country, you're learning a different side of football that you've never been taught. It's another school. Like every country has got their own way of teaching football. So I've like been taught Scottish way, which is which is Brilliant. I've had a little mix in Norway for however long, three months I was there, but now I've been in Italy for a good a good part of my career. So I've learned like I've learned a lot tactically, disciplined and also the technical side of the game as well as came on leaps and bounds. Like I've improved so much since since I first came. Uh, the cons are the cons are you have to kind of Obviously, my girlfriend and my family and stuff are back in Scotland because she's at work. And the, the cons are you have to try and get comfortable with being alone quite a lot of the time. I know I have a lot of family that come in. My family, my brothers, my own dad, uh, girlfriend and that come and visit me. But you have to try and get used to being alone quite a lot. But I think it's a sacrifice that's hopefully going to take me to the next level uh, to where I want to be. But... And also the language, like I say, the language of the game, because when you walk into a dressing room and everybody's speaking in a different language, you don't understand nothing. It's really difficult. Obviously, I had a few players who spoke English who were really helpful uh, when I first came. But the cons are trying to come to understand that you're going to be alone quite a lot, the language. But the pros are you're learning another side of the game. You're learning a language that you can now we can speak another language in my locker which is always great and uh, I you get to experience a wonderful country because Italy is a beautiful country as well so uh, it's all about experiences hopefully I can look back on when I finish my career hopefully in the in, in a long time I can look back and think you know it was a good decision to come and play come and play football in Italy just just bring it back to the present day again how was it trying to keep fit in lockdown how was your lockdown experience Oh, that was difficult because obviously I was here on my own. So when lockdown happened, I was here on my own. I just literally found an apartment uh, just before lockdown had started. So I had nothing. Like, there was nothing in. I had to go and buy stuff rapid. I had my face mask. I had to go and buy everything for it. And then uh, obviously lockdown happened. I was alone for, like, I think it was like 31 days. Couldn't leave the... Couldn't leave the uh, my part. Could, could only go to the supermarket like twice a week maximum. Had to like fill out stuff to leave the leave my apartment if the police pulled you over, etc. But I just did press ups, sit ups every day because you weren't even allowed to go out and run yeah. for like th- thirty one days. Press ups, sit ups, etc. I managed to get home for a little bit. The club let me fly home, but that was a nightmare trying to get home. But I managed to get home and. Uh, Obviously, I managed to, I could run, I could go out and run at home because it wasn't as strict the the rules. But I, I just done a lot of press ups, a lot of sit ups, and bike. The, the club gave us a bike as well, so I was spinning. I felt like uh, I was training for the Tour de France rather than actual football. 
to be honest. But it was good. Like I think a lot of clubs have done well considering the situation was kind of sprung on them quite quick. But it was difficult because it was a long time being on my own and then got, got home for around 10 days and then had to come back and then I was on my own again for another like 31 days. So it was like a difficult, difficult time. But I try to take the positives. Like I'm, I'm, I was in a fortunate situation that had my health and stuff as well. So no, it was, it was difficult, but I just try to keep my mind busy. I watched a lot of films as well. Yeah. Any favourites? I watched the the whole Avengers, the whole Avengers, twenty five films or something, and the order took me like only took me like five days. But that was that. That's probably the the best I've done. The whole Avengers yeah. sequel. I think one question that that many people would love love to ask a footballer who's playing just now is, just how different does it feel to be playing behind closed doors? No, it is. It's really different. It's really different. Like here, they've got the protocol and stuff. You have to go to uh, look. I've got the like. You have to go to the game with the mask and stuff on. You have to like be careful. Like when we go to hotels, it's like you're in a room yourself. The when the food comes, it's getting served to you. You have to be like it's. It's such a strange, strange situation. And obviously, behind closed doors with the fans is it's not ideal. But if they can watch on the TV, I guess it's. It's better than nothing, you know what I mean? Like football, I know football is only a sport, but it gives a lot of people a release as well. Like a lot of people live for football. They work hard all week to go to the football at the weekend. It's more than just a game for, for, for thousands and thousands of people. So just to get it back on the TV and try and get a bit of normality back, I think, has been a, has been a, a good thing. Obviously, it's strange. And I, I don't think they'll ever get used to playing behind closed doors, but... Hopefully in the the near future they, they can let the fans back back in the stadium. Okay, last but not, not least, just to wrap this all up, I would love to find out what is Liam Henderson's number one top tip of being a footballer abroad. Being a footballer abroad is uh, try and learn the language as quick as possible. Even though it took me around six to eight months to properly feel like I could have a conversation, I think it's just be open minded. Like be willing to, willing to learn. Like if someone's telling you something different from what I got taught in Scotland, just to be open to that, and uh, just take everything on board. Just be like a sponge. Just if people are giving you information, it's because they want to make you better. So if you take that information and can put it in your game, then it's going to help you. If people are giving you, trying to give you help, they're not telling you you're doing stuff wrong just to get on at you. I think it's really important for young footballers to have an open mind and be ready to learn and obviously work hard like obviously put the extra hours in and stuff and, and uh, yeah be open minded I think and be ready to learn about anything I think that's important Brilliant. thank you very much for all your time no problem at all no problem